in this practical we see all the pieces we've seen in the practicals 2.0 and 2.1 coming together and playing nicely in torch using torch and then package we'll start with reviewing the Jacobian and the Hessian partial derivative formulation uh, this is quite essential to understand how partial derivatives are computed in Torch. We will create then a logistic unit with the NN package. We will perform the forward pass step by step in order to apply the knowledge we have acquired in previous practicals. We will start with NN linear, which requires an input dimensionality and an output dimensionality. We will learn then how to use the curly brackets operator. We will see how to access the weight and the bias of a linear layer and its own derivatives of the cost function with respect to the, its own weights and bias. We will see then how to zero these partial derivatives and then we will uh, introduce the sigmoid nonlinearity. We will see how to use the forward method of the uh, module. Linear and sigmoid are modules, so by writing nn.module, I just represent both of them. Then we will also uh, implement the back propagation uh, pass step by step, again to verify our understanding of the underlying algorithm. We will start by defining a loss function with the NN MSC criterion, mean square error. Then we'll see the attribute size average of the criterion and how to change its value. Uh, moreover, we see that the forward method uh, for a criterion now expects an input and a target, whereas for the module it just expects a single input. Moreover, uh, we, see, we will see how to compute the uh, gradient of the error with respect to the output of the network using the update grad input. And then how to back propagate the uh, gradient computation through all the modules uh, of our network, which also require the current input to the specific module and the uh, gradient at the output of the uh, given module. Uh, we will see also how to accumulate uh, the gradient parameters, basically how to compute the um, partial derivative of the error function with respect to the parameters of a given layer. In this specific case, uh, the linear is the only module which has parameters. Then we will introduce the NN sequential, which allows us to perform the forward and back propagation with just two simple commands. So we see how to add modules to our sequential container, uh, how to forward an input through all the modules within the sequential container. And then we will forward the uh, output of the sequential within uh, our loss function, where we speci specify the input, which is the prediction of the network and the uh, expected target. Then we perform the backward step, which is actually for the criterion uh, most of the time like the same of update uh, of update grad input. Uh, the backward step actually performs uh, both the update grad input and the ACK grad parameters. Uh, usually criterions don't have trainable parameters, but if they do, then it will perform uh, that as well. Uh, then we see how to get a specific layer out of a sequential with the get uh, method. We see how to zero the uh, partial derivative of the uh, error with respect to the parameters of the model with the zero arc parameters. And then we we'll back propagate the uh, gradient of the criterion through the network and with the backward uh, method to which we have to provide the input to the network and the grad criterion. Finally, we can update our parameters based on the learning rate, ETHA. And finally now, we can 
train, uh, we will train a um, generic neural network uh, by using stochastic gradient descent and mini batch gradient descent. We will do so by using the forward, backward, and update grad parameters together with the zero uh, grad parameters functions we just illustrated. We can do the same by using instead uh, an N stochastic gradient uh, to which we simply provide the network and the loss function we decide. And then all we actually need is simply to ask the stochastic gradient to perform a training of our network based on the specific criterion on the dataset that we provide. As last uh, point, we will see how to perform uh, a regression task with a three-layer neural network uh, input, a hidden layer of three neurons, and just one output uh, neuron. We will see this one uh, at the following address, github.com, at call, my uh, username, Torch, machine learning with Torch. So far, we have used the Jacobian formulation. This means uh, when we have a partial derivative dy on the vector x, uh, this is going to be a one row matrix. Where each component is going to be simply um, the y in the x1 up to the last one, the y scalar on the x n. If we have instead the y uh, vector in the x, so it's only variable, which is a scalar on the denominator, um, this is going to be equal to the column vector of the derivatives of the components. So we have the y1 in the x and down until the last one which is going to be the y m in the x and there we go finally if we have a combination of the two so we have the y vector and the x vector this is going to be the jacobian so which is the y1 in the x1 and we go down to the last one so it's going to be the y m above the x1 and then if we go on the other side we're going to have still here the first row uh, versus the last element of n and then down we have the last one element here the y m and the x n and this is the jacobian of on y the last case is it's when we have uh, a scalar so we have dy on the x, uh, x matrix. And this one, since we use the Jacobian formulation, if we say that x belongs to R m times n, then the partial derivative with respect to the matrix x is going to be the, uh, the dimensionality is going to be n times m. So we have that um, the, the dimensionality is the transposed basically of what it is on the denominator. So like it happened here in the first case we have the vector uh, column vector x so we have since it's a de denominator we are going to have a row uh, of derivatives um, and the same way here we have a matrix of the denominator uh, which is dimension m times n and therefore the partial derivative with respect to that matrix is going to be in the uh, transposed 
uh, in terms of dimensionality, so it's n times m. For this very same reason, uh, let's compute now the dimensionality of the partial derivative of the error with respect to the parameter theta, capital theta, of layer L. So A hat of layer L is going simply to be, uh, belongs to the dimension S layer L plus 1. On the other side, uh, up to here, we have the, the error of the layer plus 1 is going to be uh, of dimensionality S L plus 1. And therefore, if we compute also the transposed, we are going to have 1 times S L plus 1. And therefore, we had that the multiplication is going to be having as many rows as SL plus 1. And as many columns as SL plus 1, small. And we know that the matrix, uh, capital theta, of layer L goes from goes to S layer L plus 1 and it starts from S L plus 1 and we can see of course here that we have um, the, the partial derivative with respect to a matrix of S L plus 1 times S L plus the bias is going to be in the transpose, so SL plus the bias times S of layer L plus 1. In Torch, we are using instead the Hessian formulation. And in this case, we have that dy on d capital X where X belongs to R M N it's also belonging to R M N uh, in this case when we have to do the weight update so we have our matrix theta we can actually write this on and it is uh, legitimate uh, theta plus uh, learning rate eta multiplied by de respect to d theta and we saw just now that this all element here will have the same dimensionality of this one uh, in the Jacobian uh, formulation we should have add a transposition to the second part but as we said in uh, torch we use the Hessian formulation where basically uh, all the results of the, uh, the the partial derivatives are basically the transposed of the uh, normal kind of notation this is also called numerator layout and this one, the Hessian, is also called denominator layout uh, you can read more about this uh, on Wikipedia and look for uh, matrix calculus let's run torch uh, we would like to create our uh, sig sigmoid uh, unit uh, let's require uh, the package nn 
let's say our neuron has uh, n equal 5 uh, neurons and then the final output has dimensionality 3 so we can create uh, the linear which is going to be creating the uh, weighted input it's going to be an nn dot linear going from n to k so if we print linear we see it goes from five uh, elements of input which is the dimensionality of our uh, x vector without accounting for the element x0, uh, the bias and it goes to our output uh, so we go from x, the input of size 5 to the output, h uh, theta of x, which has size uh, 3 let's see what's inside this linear linear has a bunch of things inside uh, let's start with the things that are more uh, they are making more sense uh, to begin with so we have lin dot um, weight and this is the matrix 3 times 5 meaning it shoots to a dimensionality of 3 which is the output and takes uh, 5 elements which are the element of the um, the size of the input x and the, we have another one which is lin.bias which is basically our first column of our theta matrix so uh, we can call here uh, now theta1 it's going to be uh, torch concatenate the first term, the bias and the second part, the weight and we concatenate along the second dimension so across the columns and this actually creates a new tensor so if I um, display theta1 it's going to be uh, simply the bias uh, vector for 0 0.43, uh, 0 0.44, uh, minus 0 0.22 and minus 0 0.28 uh, and then there we have and then we have the the rest of the bias, the, the rest of the weights let's see again uh, lin so what's else in here so we have uh, something that is called grad weight so let's see what is that grad weight and all they are all zeros okay and lin dot grad bias and all these are zeros as well so the first one what is called grad weight uh, is going to be basically the partial derivative of uh, e with respect to the um, the weight basically of the uh, this module and grad bias is going to be the e with respect to the uh, bias So in our case, if we uh, consider grad uh, theta 1, uh, this is simply going to be uh, torch.cat um, lean.grad bias uh, stuck in front of grad weight on the second dimensionality. And there you go. This is the vector which we call which is the, the partial derivative of the error with respect to the parameter theta1 in case those uh, gradients are not uh, already zero we can zero them with lean uh, zero grad parameters and if they were not zero now they are zero for sure we will see later uh, why we need to zero um, these parameters and it's basically uh, connected to the fact, connected to the way we can train a network if you use a batch or mini batch gradient descent. We have to accumulate um, the partial derivatives with respect to the parameters for several iterations. So these are this is the place where uh, these partial derivatives are accumulated. And therefore we have to start with a clean uh, accumulation point, so we want to zero them. 
before starting. Then, so the first part is done. So I think we have. Then we have uh, an output which is empty at the moment because we haven't inserted anything in the module. We have a grad input which is the um, derivative of the output with respect to the input of this block, and we don't have anything at the output, nothing in the input, so it doesn't. It's empty at the moment. And the last part we haven't covered is the type, which is torch double tensor, and this uh, shows the type of module we are using at the moment. Uh, let's create the second module after the linear. We need a sigmoid function, so we have sigmoid uh, equal nn dot sigmoid. Um, let's see if we print sigmoid. That's a uh, and then a sigmoid, and let's see what's inside. So we have ag again a way a grad input, a gradient input gradient, which is empty. We have a type that is torch double tensor by default, and then also the output is empty. Let's see how this sigmoid looks like. So let's require new plot, and then we can do, for example, z equal torch lin space from minus 10 to 10 with 21 points and then we can have new plot plot uh, z and sigmoid to which we um, forward the z and let's see and here we have the sigmoid it goes to 0 basically uh, after uh, minus 5 for numbers that are lower than then minus five and then it goes it hits the one half for x equals zero here and then after x uh, for x greater than five it approaches the, the one all right so let's go on and let's start now with the forward pass so uh, we can clear the screen and let's start forward for forward pass. So let's have our input uh, vector x, uh, just a torch random uh, normal distribution of size we said n. So this is our x, and then we have that a1 it's equal uh, x by definition. Uh, we have that. Um, h theta, the hypothesis, uh, the final hypothesis, the output of our network, it's going to be the sigmoid to which we forward the linear, to which we forward our input x. And this is going to be our output. Let's have a look. So it's three dimension as expected. And those are the values, 0 0.36, 0 0.55, 0 0.29. Uh, let's try to reproduce these values um, by ourselves so we actually understand what's going on. So we have Z2, uh, it's equal to theta1, which is the concatenation of the bias column uh, with the um, uh, weight matrices for, for definition of how we saw in the previous uh, lessons. Uh, multiply by what? by our input to which we put uh, on top the plus one, so our uh, a1 hat. So we have torch hat of we have torch ones, just one one, and then we have the a1. And we concatenate in the first dimension. So z2 is the weighted input, and then we have to uh, apply a sigmoid to the z2. Let's do this by hand. So we have a2 equal z2, uh, which I clone, and then I apply. Uh, if I don't clone, I'm gonna overwrite its value. So I just want to preserve whatever it was there. So we are gonna have a function. Function. Fun. Function of the uh, scalar z, which simply uh, 
return returns a one divided by uh, one plus what math dot exponential of minus z the scalar uh, we close this one and we end the function and we close the parentheses and let's see our output a2 and there you go 0 0.3613 0 0.5510 and 0 0.2924 so we had just uh, seen that our uh, computations are our network is actually computing what we expect, uh, what we have seen before in the theory. Uh, let's perform now the backward uh, backward pass. This is a bit more um, elaborated. So backward pass or back back propagation or back propagation. Uh, so we have to define first a loss function which is going to be, uh, in this case, the mean square uh, error criterion. So if we print loss, it's going to tell us MSC criterion. And then uh, if we would like to know what it does, we can press question mark, and then we have nn.msc criterion. A description of how it works creates a criterion that measures the mean square error between n elements in the input x and the output y so loss of x and y where x is the input and y are the basically targets or the uh, labels is equal to 1 above n where n is the dimensionality of the, the vector x and y or summation of the squared differences. We can also see that the, the division by n can be avoided if one sets the internal variable size average to false. Uh, that's what we are going to do because in our um, in our previous uh, lectures we, we haven't performed any size average. Let's print the content of loss. And we see it contains a grad input, uh, input gradient basically, a size average that is true by default, and the output that is uh, zero to begin with. So we are going to say loss dot size average is actually um, false uh, because we don't want that division. So we can check if it worked. Yes, it did work. So let's compute now the error uh, based on our targets. So we have to define our targets. We have y, uh, which is going to be uh, torch rand, uh, rand, not rand n, because the output of the network uh, goes from 0 to 1, since we have applied a sigmoid nonlinearity. So rand um, of size k, so this is our y. Let's see the API of the uh, the loss function, the, the criterion. Uh, basically, if we write forward, uh, we are going to need an input, and then we need our target or label. So we can do E, uh, the error, for this specific sample, the only sample we have here. It's going to be equal loss uh, forward to which we uh, send the output of the network which was which was called the h uh, sub subscript theta capital theta and the targets or label y and here we have e uh, which is 0 0.35 let's try to compute this by ourselves so as we saw in the description before the criterion performs the difference of a h theta minus y in the target on rise to the power of 2 and then summing all together so there is no one half factor uh, as we saw in the uh, in the lesson before so we had to actually uh, keep in mind this uh, this one half missing here which is gonna be coming back of course when we perform the derivative of the uh, square right and here we go, 
we have the exactly same result. So we are still performing forward, but we are forwarding uh, in the criterion to compute the error, which is required in order to perform the back propagation uh, steps. Uh, so let's compute now the uh, derivative, uh, partial derivative of the error with respect to the output of our network. So this is simply our loss. We can write update grad input and we send h theta, which is the input. So we have the same API of the forward. We have input and target. And then the targets are the y. And there we go. So if I print the e in the h, uh, as we saw, as we said before, uh, since we are using the Hessian notation, it's it's going to be having the same the same dimensionality of uh, h of theta. No? Let's compute this by by hand, so we can see whether it is correct or not. So we, if we perform the derivative of this um, expression here, we are gonna get we had two times, simply the difference between uh, h theta and y. And there you go, we had the same numbers. Minus 0 0.37, 0 0.19 and minus 1.10. So far, so good. What we are seeing here in Torch is exactly uh, what we have seen before in the in the in the theoretical slide. Uh, let's compute the error now at the output. So we have delta two. It's going to be the sigmoid to which we uh, say to update uh, grad input, and we send inside uh, the input. We always have to send the input, which is z two, and then the um, output derivative, so the derivative which we find at the output of this block, which is going to be actually the input derivative of the criterion. And here we have delta 2, which we of course have uh, an element of 3, it's going to be a size of 3. So let's verify this is correct, so we can see uh, we start from d, e, d, h, uh, we do a clone, uh, then we have simul, and then we have a2, to which we do a simul of 1 minus a2. And there you go. So we just, we just apply uh, the formula number 3. Now we can compute the uh, partial derivative of the error with respect to the parameters of the linear module. So to do so, in Torch we can do lin uh, accumulate gradient parameters to which we provide the input which is to the module which is x and the uh, grad input of the following module or the grad output of the current module. So in this case it's uh, delta 2. And then we can check what this has done. It looks like it hasn't done much. So inside lean we have uh, grad bias and grad weight. So we can recall before they were zeros. So if I go back up, we had that they were zero. So let's see if I print them again. What they are. So if we print now grad theta, there you go. So this is the um, these are the partial derivative of the this is the partial derivative of the error with respect to the uh, capital theta uh, matrix, which is simply the concatenation of the first column, uh, which is the grad uh, grad bias and the other matrix, matrix which is the grad weight. Uh, let's verify also that this, is, uh, this computation is correct. So we can do so by performing the uh, column vector multiplication times the row vector. 
so that we have the partial derivative of the error with respect to the parameters of the linear module. Um, let's write down so it's more easy to explain. So we have delta 2 to which I'm specifying which I'd like to view is a column vector so it's gonna have so it's gonna be as many rows as it needs and just one column to which I multiply the concatenation of a simply a one and my x on the only dimension and then this one instead I would like to view as a one row and how many columns it cares and there we go we got the same result nice let's go one step further and let's compute the partial derivative of the error function with respect to the input of this module which is actually the global input it's not useful for training but it may have other uh, utilities uh, for example, if we have multiple layers, we are going to need that value in order to compute uh, the delta at the previous layers. So let's just uh, call this as lean grad uh, input, which is not uh, delta 1, because delta 1, we have also the we take account in account also the nonlinearity. In this case, we don't have yet the nonlinearity. There is no nonlinearity at all. So it's simply going to be the partial derivative of the error function with respect to the input of the linear module. Uh, this is equal to simply linear update uh, grad input to which I provide the input and the delta, uh, the partial derivative at the output, so grad output basically it's called and um, this one, let's see it's going to be of the same dimensionality of the uh, input, which is which was 5 uh, this is still because we are using the Hessian uh, notation or the denominator layout and let's verify these numbers are also correct so as we recall from equation uh, 5 that we saw also today before we can compute this by using the matrix uh, lean dot weight uh, transposed to which I multiply um, to each, which is applied to the um, delta 2 and there we go so we just verify that all the computations are correct and we obtain uh, consistent results. It's, it's pretty nice. We input so far so many commands and it, it looks like quite daunting to uh, follow all has been done so far. Uh, this is because we haven't actually uh, used properly the NN package. The NN package provides us also um, and other other amenities which make the whole training uh, a breeze and especially the forward and back propagations uh, can be run in just two lines of code uh, here we have typed down all the steps just in order to verify the correctness of these steps and uh, now we can instead see uh, how we can type all this in a much more compact way but which will hide of course uh, some intuition and some uh, gotchas that will actually uh, strengthen our understanding of the algorithm and how the um, package works. So let's define uh, a network as being a container which is called sequential. Sequential simply uh, allows us to have a sequential series of blocks one after each other where all the forward steps are performed automatically so the output of the first block is sent to the second block to the third to the fourth and etc and when we perform the uh, grad input steps all the grad inputs go from the last to the first block so we can add a net add our linear module 
then we can add also our sigmoid module and then we can print the uh, network and it will show us that we have a simply a sequential uh, we have an input which is sent to the first module which is sent to the second module which is basically the output of the uh, network to perform the whole um, forward pass we can write simply uh, pred which is our prediction of the network which is our basically uh, which is our age of theta we defined before but we call it now prediction so we don't overwrite our values uh, that we have written before it's simply network uh, forward of variable input x so now we can see uh, prediction is this and if we check h capital theta it's exactly the same so that's uh, perfect we saw just with one line we can compute the output of the network uh, we can compute the error error equal uh, loss to which we forward uh, our prediction and the correct label y so r equal this one and we can have that the previous e it's the same so so far so good and now the cool part so we can compute grad criterion um, equal loss and backward to which we send again pred and y so we can compare grad criterion with the e and the h which is the same before proceeding with the uh, backward step for the network we have to actually uh, clear out the um, grab bias and weight so um, now that we have a network I can have net get first and we get the first uh, module within the network so if I'd like to see what are the uh, partial derivative of the um, error with respect to the weight I can print them here as this net get one grad bias concatenated to net get one dot grad weight uh, second uh, along the second dimension so these were the numbers we got before so we have to zero them otherwise they will sum uh, to this one so we can simply do this by typing net zero grab parameters so if we call again the same function we have all zeros that's lovely we have net backward to which we uh, input our input x and the grad criterion and this one has performed a bunch of things let's see uh, the last thing that has performed we have this minus 0 0.0958 so this is exactly the lean grad input we have computed before we can see minus 0 0.0958 0, 13, 39, 0, 0, 8, 2, 6. If we go down, we had the same numbers here. So when we perform a backward step, return as the input gradient of the current uh, network module, whatever we are using. And let's call this guy again. So we compare these numbers, and we can see we have minus 0.0. .0 860 minus 0.0615 second line uh, 00461 third line minus 02284 uh, that's perfect so we have we computed the uh, the gradient of the error with respect to the parameters all the parameters of the uh, linear module which are the only parameters in this case uh, with just one instruction that was the network colon backward to which we send uh, x, the input of the network, and the um, gradient of the error with respect to the um, 
output of the network, the age of capital theta. So let's see how the parameters are updated. So to update the parameters, I can define a learning rate, eta, equal uh, 0 0.01, for example. And then I can say network, listen, update your parameters based on the learning rate, eta. Bam, finish. The network has updated its own parameters based on the current uh, parameters and the gradient of the error with respect to the par um, parameters. Uh, let's check that that is actually what had happened uh, in reality. We can have D, E, I think we have the E respect the H, no. So the E in the theta one, it's equal this thing here above, right? And then we have uh, theta one, minus uh, ether which multiplies uh, the theta the e the theta 1 so this one is this one and let's see there we go theta let's called new And let's print theta new. And we have what we expected. So the new parameters, uh, we, where we have here the first uh, is the column uh, relative to the bias, and here it's the instead uh, the matrix, the new the new matrix theta one. It's exactly. Um, uh, what we expected. So this is actually this has been computed by Torch because we actually uh, perform now. We just check inside the internals of the lin. So linear dot bias and linear dot weight. We have them uh, concatenated across the second dimension. So we have the first one here, uh, lin bias, and then there is the matrix here, uh, lin weight, which has been computed as the uh, previous theta. The, the full matrix here, which includes the bias terms, the bias vector, uh, minus eta to perform the gradient descent step, multiplied by the DE in the theta one. Finally, let's see how we can train a system uh, with all we have learned so far. So now we are confident that the torch works and the library and then it works magically. It does require really few instructions in order to compute forward and backward uh, propagation. Basically, there are two instructions, one for forward, one for backwards. And then we have the uh, to zero sometimes the uh, parameters, the grad parameters. Uh, so let's have an, a full, an, an example, a working example, uh, almost a working example. So let's see how to train the full system. Uh, with a script, right? Mm, we have training. Uh, so we have our x is going to be our design uh, matrix, and then we have our y, it's going to be our labels or targets, if you like, matrix or vector. Uh, the first one uh, has size m times n and the second one is going to be of size uh, m examples times capital K. Alright, uh, control u to actually clean the line. That's cool. Um, so we are gonna have again uh, a for loop which is going which is going to go for uh, from the first example so number one to the m example uh, perform what? So we are going to have uh, our prediction which is equal to the network we have defined uh, forward to which we send uh, the ith example of the design matrix. Uh, then we can have a, again a local error which is uh, going to be equal, let's call it loss 
uh, forward forward to which we provide the prediction and the label of the ith example and then we can have uh, the grad loss uh, which is going to be those backward backward of what we had to send the same uh, prediction and y and then uh, we have now to zero uh, we had to zero the uh, accumulated parameters so this is uh, in this case we are talking here um, uh, of this is uh, stochastic gradient descent in this case uh, so we have to zero every time zero grad parameters and then we have network uh, backward to which we provide the input so it's going to be capital X of I and then we have grad, grad uh, loss and then the last one is going to be network to which we go uh, say update parameters because again we provide an update every time we provide a new example in the case of stochastic purely stochastic gradient descent uh, update parameters and here we have our uh, ETA uh, the learning rate and this is the uh, full example working example for uh, applying stochastic gradient design given that we have a design matrix X and a design uh, label matrix uh, Y capital Y and capital X um, if instead we would like to perform uh, mini batch uh, grainy descent this is a little bit uh, more code to write but it performs better in terms of convergence and in terms of speed up uh, if we use multi-dimensional input which I'm not gonna illustrate right now but mini batches uh, provide some uh, specific advantage uh, both computationally and also um, uh, optimization uh, wise um, so we uh, are going to have here uh, for i again that goes from 1 to the number of uh, examples we have but uh, jump with batch size uh, so in this case if we go like from 1 to 1000 24 with batch size of 128 we are going to have i equal 1 129 257 and etc up to the last value uh, so we can do uh, we start by uh, zeroing the parameters and then we do for j equal uh, goes from 0 to the batch size uh, minus 2 so uh, at the beginning i uh, the summation i plus j is equal 1 and for the last is going for the last uh, value of j is going to be uh, batch size minus 1 no oh, actually plus 1 batch size this is going to be batch size minus 1 so it's going to be batch size so it goes from 1 to 128 then the second time is going to be 129 to 256 then it's going to be 260 250 7 and so on to the whatever is the output um, do then we have if uh, we exceed the index m so if i plus j it's greater than our index m then please uh, don't do anything uh, otherwise uh, the same thing of before so uh, prediction equal net forward uh, then we are going to have local uh, error and like before and then we have again local uh, grad loss and then uh, 
uh, we follow with net uh, backwards and then we end it here after when we finish to, pro uh, to process the batch we can actually um, update parameters based on the grad with the learning rate and then we are actually done here uh, last part uh, is actually uh, so we actually don't have to write all this code neither so torch allows us to write even this code so that's why uh, it gives us so many um, very nice uh, treats let's say <laughs> this way um, so the treat is basically uh, if I have uh, I have to uh, provide a data set uh, to start with so we have a, a data set which uh, can be an empty table at the be uh, beginning to begin with and then this um, table has to provide a size which simply returns M the size of the data set so so far nothing uh, too complicated uh, and then we have for i equal 1 to the size of the dataset uh, please do populate dataset so element i it's going to be a table of uh, the first element is going to be the example and the second element is going to be the table and and here so once uh, we have this kind of data set which returns a size if required and then uh, each uh, each item is the table of uh, example and of the input and the target we can simply uh, create a trainer so we have local trainer like a personal trainer <laughs> a local trainer um, yeah and funny right so this is going to be a stochastic uh, gradient trainer uh, which we send the model and we send the loss we decided to use and all we really need to do is say hey trainer please train my network on the data set I'd like to so basically to train your network you just read really need those two lines of code um, of course sure you have to specify uh, a network and a loss function and of course a data set otherwise you wouldn't be uh, training on anything so sure you have a necessity of defining a data set a network a loss function which you know suits your needs and then you create a trainer which is going to be training your network in just one line. We can see a full example of how to train a network with the trainer, the stochastic gradient from Torch, um, at this address. Let's have a look. So uh, here we have uh, the machine learning with Torch repository. Uh, in specific, the first topic it's a regression with MLP multi-layer perception which is simple simply a neural fancy way of calling a neural network um, usually a multi-layer perception MLPs are used for pattern recognition a classification task in the field of image and speech recognition nevertheless they can be effectively used for regression check out MLP regression section to find more to find out more about it so you can go here and then you can see uh, what I'm trying to do in this tutorial. Um, so basically uh, I will explain how to perform regression with a neural network. So while I was reading the uh, Bishop's book Pattern Recognition and Machine Learning, uh, I got to the point in which a three-layer multi-layer perception with only three hidden neurons and one output linear neuron so four neurons in overall was used to uh, regress seamlessly some contiguous functions 
and here uh, is the image. Uh, so we have the illustration of the capability of a multi-layer perception to uh, appro approximate four different functions uh, comprising uh, f of x equal x square, uh, f of x equal sine of x, f of x equal absolute value of x, and last one is the f equal h of x, where x h is the step function or the uh, heavy side step function. Yeah. Uh, in uh, each case, n equal 50 data points, so the x coordinates shown as blue dots uh, have been sampled uniformly in x over the interval from minus 1 to plus 1 and the corresponding values of f, x evaluated. So f of x are the y targets, so labels, and the x are simply the input one-dimensional scalar. And also the output is a scalar. So we have size of the input uh, layer, it's one. Size of the output layer, it's also one. And then we have three neurons, which are the internal uh, hidden neurons. These data points are then used to train a two-layer neural network having three hidden units uh, with a tan h, which is similar to the sigmoid that goes from minus 1 to plus 1 instead, uh, activation function, and linear output units. So there is no uh, nonlinearity uh, after the last layer. The resulting network function are shown by the red curves here in the picture, and the output of the three hidden, un uh, hidden units are shown by the three dashed curves. And so just go through the just go through the tutorial and then there is the algorithm where I explain uh, how I use the trainer for training on the data set. Um, and I highly recommend to uh, click here on the source regression and actually play with the code. So read the description and use it interactively. So change some values and play around to understand better how it works you have different modes. Just go through it carefully and you will get a lot of intuition and understanding, I believe. And that's the end of the overview of the NN package. We will see uh, more features in the next podcast. Um, stay tuned. Have a good night. Why a good night? Because yes, it's night now. I'm working at light night.